in this video i'm going to show you how you can simply edit any photo using adobe photoshop welcome back to the channel my name is cjam and as i mentioned we're going to be editing a photo today using photoshop it doesn't matter what kind of photo it is how low of quality the photo is or even if it's the highest quality photo you can edit any kind of photo using adobe photoshop and the photo that we're going to be using today is one that we got from Envita elements and Envita elements is the sponsor of this video but we'll talk a little bit more about them later on so let's go ahead and jump into photoshop all right so here's my photo that i got from Envita elements right i already loaded it into photoshop and you can do that two ways you can either drag it and drop it into photoshop or you can go to file and then open right now know that i have my photo here you'll see it over here in my layers and the first thing i want to do is i want to duplicate this layer right the background layer you can do that by going Control and j command j if you're on mac or you could have right clicked on the background layer and just clicked duplicate layer right then the next thing i'm going to do is right click on the duplicated layer and just go ahead and convert it to a smart object, right? You can even go ahead and turn off the background one that you have. And I'll show you in a little bit why we converted it to a smart object. Now to edit our photo, as I mentioned, that's what we're gonna be doing today. You wanna go ahead and hit Control, Shift and A on your keyboard, you know, Command, Shift, A if you're on Mac. And you'll notice that you'll get a window here that says Camera Raw Filter. And this is the window that we're gonna be making all our edits in, right? And you'll notice that you have some basic controls here. You have curve, detail, color mixer, color grading, etc., etc. You have a host of controls, right? And we're gonna be working in the basic tab today. And the first thing I wanna show you is the temperature slider. If I were to slide this all the way over to the left, the photo will be getting cooler, going more to the blue side on the white balance scale, right? If I go to the opposite direction, it's gonna get more yellow, warmer, right? But that's not what I want. I just wanna go to about minus 10, somewhere there, right? And for the tint, I wanna go ahead and go a little bit over to the positive side in the purples, about plus four, that's fine. Your photo may be different. You can tweak it however you want, right? Then for the exposure, I'm just gonna bump it up a little bit, right? Then I'm just going to up the shadows as well. Then I'm going to bring the contrast up a bit, right? About 40s in the 40s is fine. Highlights, I'm just going to take a little bit off the highlights. Let me show you what it does here. See that? That's all the highlights off. Back to zero. All the highlights off. And I just want a little bit off, right? Let me lift the shadows some more about there that's fine and then what i want to show you next is if you were to add some blacks in here see that all the way over to the negative side see that but that's too extreme that's not what we want if you were to go the opposite direction and take off all the blacks you'll see what's happening there right but i don't want all of that maybe let's do a little bit let's do like minus 15 or 17 that's fine I want to jump down to, I want to close the basic tab, then I want to jump down to color mixer, right? This is where you can get really creative with your colors. So you have reds, oranges, all the colors that you can adjust here in Photoshop, right? But what you have to do is identify the colors that are present in your photo. So in my photo, I realize that I have some purples or magentas, maybe even some reds here in this jacket. And the, well not jacket, the sweater, and then the background is obviously blue, right? Now, if I were to go to the saturation slider, we're under the saturation tab, you have the hue tab and luminance, right? So I'm working under the saturation tab. If I were to find the blue and bring it all the way down to minus 100, it will reduce all the blue in my image, right? And make the background gray. But that's not what I want. I wanna actually bring back the blues to zero and then go to the positive side and make the blue brighter, right? If I if I even tried the aquas to see if there's any aqua present, let me go to negative. There seems to be a little bit of aqua present. Let me bump it up. See that? There seems to be a little bit of aqua present. And then obviously I can adjust the magentas or the purples because we have that in the sweater. If I were to bring them all the way down to negative along with the red, you can see that it's all gone, right? Let me just bring them back to zero. Let's pump the red a little bit because the red seems to be giving us the better results but you have to note that while you're increasing the red 
her lip is also going to become more red right see that so you have to be careful if you don't want to overdo it and then because the red is predominant we can go ahead and just bump up the magentas as well see that not much purple there just a little bit so we'll just leave it as is right let's touch the reds a little bit more because we can right let's do the blues a little bit more as well what do you guys think i think this looks much much better and if i were to zoom in wait let me just go back to basic add some more contrast right and then i can go down to detail and sharpen the image so if you have an image that's no i wouldn't say like if it's completely blurred out this won't save you right but if you want to just make it a little bit more tact sharp you can bump the sharpening just a little bit let's do about um 13 13 is fine right no you can go ahead and exit this menu by clicking OK out of the camera raw filter, right? I'm gonna click OK and it's gonna work and there's our result. And remember earlier I told you that I'm gonna show you why we created the converted this image to a smart object, the duplicated layer that we created. If you look over here in your camera, in your layers, sorry, you'll notice that you see something underneath your layer one that says smart filters and under that you see camera raw filter which is obviously what we just worked with right now if you were to turn this off before i do that pay attention to the image and look what happens when i turn it off right so i'm turning it off that's the before and if i turn it back on we'll see what we have after we made all our adjustments this is our after right before and then after and if i were to turn on the layer beneath it which is our original layer it will be the same thing right before after now if i did not convert this duplicated layer to a smart object i would not be able to turn off my camera raw filter like i'm able to right here it will just have been burnt into the image and i could not have made any adjustments and that's what you call destructive um, editing versus non-destructive editing and you want to always make sure that you're editing your graphics or your photos in a non-destructive method within photoshop that way you can always go back and make changes because What's the point of working in Photoshop if not to save your project so you can go back and make adjustments if you want, right? Next, I'm just going to go ahead and hit Ctrl and S to save my project. And I'm just going to name this LSPV 101 um, Photoshop Photo Editing, all right? I'm just going to go ahead and hit Save and then click OK and then now I have my edit so far to this photo saved, right? This photo looks much better for me and I can use it in like a social media graphic if I want to versus where we're coming from when we just imported it. So this is the after, before, after, before, right? And I'm really liking the after. Control and S to save it again. And because we have the camera raw filter here applied to our smart object layer, I can double click it, right? And then the camera raw filter will open again for me, right? See that? And I have all my edits still here. I can add some curves, right? I can add a little bit of curves. I can go back and add some more contrast. If I wanted to um, lift up some of the shadows out of her face, because if I, if I think her face is too like dark, right? How do I um, <laughs> move this? All right, there I go with my hand tool by pressing H. Now, if I wanted to move some shadows out of her face because her face looks a little bit underexposed to me, I can just go ahead and come over here to my adjustment brush, right? On the right hand side or masking, right? And then I can go down to brush for my adjustment brushes. And then what I want to do is find my light tab here and I want to lift some shadows out of her face. So let me bump this up and then let me just scrub away some shadows. And then let's see the results that we got, right? Oops. So that's where we are now. Before, after. Before, after. That's looking much better to me. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. And I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. And it will be saved. See that? No, I can just hit Ctrl and S to save all that I just did. And then I can go to File and then Save a Copy. And then I can save this as a JPEG that I can use on social media. Or I can bring it into 
a graphic that I'm designing for my social media, right? So earlier I said that Envata Elements was the sponsor of this video, right? And as a photographer, as a graphic designer, Envata Elements is your best friend. It is the coolest and most content rich stock website where you can get stock photos, stock videos, royalty free music, and so much more. And today we got this photo from them, right? And the cool thing about Envata's stock photos that I like is they don't just give you one photo. They recommend different poses from the same publisher of that photo. You get different looks, different emotions, and the different styles, and you really get a lot of options to help with your design or for us today to help with our photo editing tutorial. So Invata Elements wants to give you guys a free seven day trial. And what that means is you can head over to their website, sign up for the free seven day trial and download unlimited stock photos to practice with. And not just stock photos, anything you can think of, you can download unlimited within that seven day period. And if you want to take it even a step further and sign up for their paid subscription, they gave me a discount code for you guys to give you 70% off your first month's subscription. 70% off unlimited downloads. All you have to do is hit the first two links in this video's description and get that discount right now. So did you know that you can edit any photo in Photoshop? After all that we did today, how confident are you to start editing your photos to get the best results for your designs? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching this video. Once again, my name is CJAM and I will see you guys in the next video.